just as you are to worship come just as you are before your God Good morning. Good morning. A warm welcome to everyone this morning on this, the 13th Sunday after Pentecost. We would like to begin this service by acknowledging that the land we gather on is the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee people. We also honor the heritage and gifts of the Métis people. May our actions be guided by our commitment to reconciliation. service begins. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. There will be no children's talk today. The talks will resume, of course, when Kathy returns from her vacation. I invite you to join with me in the prayer of the day. Holy God, your words feed your people with life that is eternal. Direct our choices and persons us in your truth, that renouncing what is false and evil, we may live in you, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading, please. A reading from the book of Joshua. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, long ago your ancestors, Terah and his sons, Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. Now, therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along all the way that we went, and among all the peoples through whom we passed. The Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land, Therefore, we will serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for this morning's service is a portion of Psalm 34. We will read verses 15 to 22 responsibly by alternate verse. The eyes of the righteous are upon, and his ears are open to their cry. 
troubles of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver him out of them all. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be punished. Hear us, Lord, when we cry to you. Calm our bodies and minds with the peace which passes understanding, and make us radiant with the knowledge of your goodness. Through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Second reading. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. <clears throat> Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and having done everything, to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly, as I must speak the word of the Lord.
Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of Christ. of my mouth and meditations of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in our sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Our life is a series of decisions. Throughout our lives, we are constantly making some decisions. Some big ones, some small ones, some are easier than others, but no matter how big or how small or how life-changing or even how inconsequential they are, they are a fact of everyday life. As a young police officer in uniform, I used to joke that one of the best parts of being a uniform copper was that I knew exactly what I was going to wear to work in the morning. No discussion about the color of the tie, or what color socks I had to wear. Those major, life-changing decisions were made for me. Some of the harder ones, however, were not. Like all of us, I've, heard to me, I've had to make decisions. And I must say that not all of them were good ones. Marilyn's sitting back there saying, yes, we know that. <laughs> I will not bore you with the thousands of poor decisions that I've made, but rather just focus on one of them. As a young copper walking the beat, one of our duties was to check into the beverage rooms and see what was going on. In those days, the beverage rooms were divided. There was the men's room, and there was the ladies and escorts. Draft beer was a staggering 15 cents a glass. <clears throat> and the beverage rooms were very popular watering holes. The beverage room was also a popular place to find some of the sketchier members of our society, or at least gather information as to who was out and about, who was involved in criminal activity. The beer flowed freely, and the beer flowing freely, with it flowing freely, was inevitable that the odd disturbance would break out. One particular night, I was walking the beat, as part of the normal routine, I stopped in at the old Lincoln Hotel. When I arrived at the bar, the bartender says, I'm glad to see you. I was just going to call. He pointed to one of the patrons who he said was causing a problem, and he wanted him out. Now the bartender asked if I wanted to call for backup. I glanced over at the fellow. He's not a big guy. Well, I had just graduated from police college. I'd done all that training. I knew police holds and restraints and all of those things. I didn't think there'd be much of a problem, so I said, no, we'll be fine. What I didn't realize, didn't see, in fact, couldn't see, was that this guy was a seaman from Cape Breton Island, and he was experienced in barroom brawls. Now, the procedure called for the bartender to tell the person to leave, and if he refused, the bartender was to take him by the arm and escort him out. If he resisted in any way, it was technically an assault, and at that point, I could arrest him. The bartender told the gentleman to leave, and he refused. Not wanting to waste a lot of time, I told this fellow he could leave now under his own power, or else I would drag him out, and he would spend the night in jail. In retrospect, it was probably a very poor choice of words. I probably should have spent a little more time trying to convince him that he needed to leave. I realized this rather quickly. I mean, when he picked up the chair and tried to throw it at me, I knew he was serious about not leaving. And suddenly the dance was on. 
In retrospect, my decision to suggest that I would drag him out and arrest him if he did not leave was not the best one I made that night. My decision not to be a little more tactful, of course, was not as bad as his decision <clears throat> to pick up the chair. Needless to say, a real dining book broke out, and before I, it was over, I believed that every available police officer in the city was invited to the party. Lesson learned. The decision to dirt, turn down offers of help, to not call for backup, or underestimating a person may not be a wise decision. I made a mistake, acted in haste, and did not seek out help. The decision to not seek out help can also apply to spiritual lives. Um, I cannot begin to count, to imagine the number of times taking the time to think and pray before making a decision has been helpful. I'm sure you have also found this to be true in your life. In our scripture readings today, we learn, that, learn of two occasions when the Hebrew people made important decisions, decisions made on whether or not to follow God and Jesus. In the Old Testament lesson, Joshua reminds the people that long ago when they lived beyond the Euphrates, when they were in exile, they served other gods. Now Joshua reminds them that it was God who brought them and their ancestors out of exile from Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did great things for them. They had the choice between the God of their ancestors, that their ancestors followed, and the gods of the Amorites, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land they now live or they could follow the Lord. The choice was theirs. It is their decision. Joshua makes it clear where he stands. In verse 15 he says, But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Seeing Joshua's commitment, the people respond, Far be it for us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. They have decided. They have confirmed their faith in God. The Gospel reading follows a little bit different path. The decision to follow Jesus is not as decisive. Jesus is teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum and introduces the concept of the Holy Eucharist. Now, we need to understand that this whole event that takes, pl takes place before the Last Supper. Jesus is talking about a concept they do not understand. Things like eating his flesh and drinking his blood seem gross, even repugnant to them. Many choose to leave. They certainly do not share the same view of the Eucharistic feast that we do. But when we have the benefit, but we have the benefit and the knowledge of the Last Supper, a meal that has come core to our tradition. Not understanding fully what Jesus is saying, many turn their back on Jesus and walk away. At this point, Jesus asked the twelve disciples, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Peter speaks eloquently of their faith in Jesus, a faith that would be further tested during Jesus' trial and crucifixion. It was during this time that we know they fled in fear. I say this not as criticism, but only to illustrate that following Jesus Practicing our faith in this secular world can be difficult, indeed challenging, but it can also bring great rewards. I want to close with a story and a quote I found while doing some research for today's sermon. I'm sure that all of us have heard of Dr. David Livingston, 
famous missionary and explorer who spent much of his life in Africa. It seems that on one of his expeditions, a Scottish missionary society wrote and asked him if there were good roads in Africa. Evidently, they had men who were willing to come out and work as missionaries. Livingston's reply is a classic. If you have men who will only come out if they know that there is a good road, I don't want them. I want men who will come out if there is no road at all. Livingston was certainly aware that the decision to follow Christ can be difficult. We may have to endure hardships, but with God's help, we can persevere. There is a need in this world for people to step up and practice their faith. As Dr. Livingston said, and I quote, Christ alone can save the world. Christ cannot save the world alone. Christ alone can save the world, but Christ cannot save the world alone. My prayer this week is that we all do our part in spreading the gospel, that we encourage others to become faithful followers of Christ. Amen. service continues. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son of God. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered by the conscious Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, resurrection of God, and life everlasting. Made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of courage, bless all leaders of your church. Make them ready to proclaim the gospel of peace and strengthen them to preach your loving word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creation, bless fields and orchards. Protect the land from drought and bring life-giving rain to support growth. Instruct your people in wise treatment of the world you have provided for all your creatures. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of community, bless all who seek justice between nations and peoples. Give guidance to bridge builders, heal divisions, and inspire cooperation in times of crisis, disaster, and war. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, bless all who are in any need. Accompany all who are lonely and feeling abandoned, and remind them of your abiding presence, sending your Holy Spirit into those living with chronic health conditions. Accompany all who are persecuted and exploited, and open us to their cries. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of change, Bless our transitions. Guide all who are embarking on new stages in life, such as a new job, new home, new school, or new community. 
sustain enduring friendships, and kindle new relationships and interests. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of comfort, bless all who mourn the deaths of their beloved ones. We give you thanks for the saints who have gone before us. Renew our confidence in your promise of resurrection and life in the world to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our faith, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and in deed by what we have done by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humble you and For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. We may delight in your will and walk in your way. Grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins, and serve you with a quiet mind, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Rather, gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this field. Make us to be what we receive here, your body and the life of the world. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from the evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Love Psalm Chief. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us peace now and always. Amen. I have a few announcements for this morning. Kathy will be on vacation until September the 7th. In the case of a pastoral emergency, please contact one of the wardens and the Reverend Shield Van Zendewek, Director of Christ <clears throat> Church of Transfiguration, will be our priest on call. The office hours this week will be a little bit different. Uh, Nicole will be here Monday, Thursday, and Friday from noon, from, sorry, from 9 a.m. to noon. 9 a.m. to noon, Monday, Thursday, and Friday. Community Care is once again offering its Snacks and Sneakers program to help kids start the school year with supplies, snacks, and new shoes. We are supporting this program again, so we will be collecting new school supplies, backpacks, lunch bags, running shoes, <clears throat> of any kid sizes, and healthy school safe snacks. You can drop off any donations to the church and we will have them delivered. Donations to community care can be directed to support this program. A gift of $25, if you prefer, helps outfit one student and would be greatly appreciated. Registration for this program has opened. If you know of families who might benefit from this program, have them call community care to register it and pick a time and pick up register a pickup time and let them know that their, kid, their kid's current <clears throat> shoe size. Okay. Our worship service is drawn to a close. It is time for a service in the world to begin. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.